I always have to come back at this pair. Yeah. Wow. There's only this reality. Really, that's, that's, that's amazing. We have created something that's, wow. I just, wow, okay. Stop now? No, you just take it off. Okay. <laughs> wow. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Bamba Conversations. Today, we are here with Dennis Rudolf. Was it right? Yes, that was right. Dennis was right. He's a German artist. Yes. Yeah. And um, I'm very excited to be here because it's something different. He's working with augmented reality and his paintings are, I don't know how to explain them, but they feel different. So I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having us. Of course, yeah. Thank you for, for um, letting us do this conversation with you. So and the first question that I really and I ask everybody is it's always the same. Why? Why you started, why you do it, and what's your passion? Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so um it's a longer story. Yeah. Um, we have to get started. <laughs> okay, so uh, ten years ago I had an artistic crisis where I didn't know what to paint anymore. Yeah. And I went into the desert in California. Mm -hmm. Okay to build an update of Rodin's Gates to Hell. Yeah. I don't know if you know Rodin's yeah. Gates to Hell is a very famous sculpture Rodin did at the 19th century. And it was his last work, which he never finished. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to, well, the Gates to Hell, of course. You know? yeah. and so, but he always took figures out of this um, big Sculpture, yeah. this gate, yeah. and made them big, like the Thinker, for instance. You know yeah. the Thinker? Yeah, I know it's like this. And so I thought this portal, this, um, it needs an update. And yeah. so in my crisis, I went to, to the desert and for six years tried to build it. This, uh, uh, I decided it, it needs to be a portal, you know, mm -hmm. and it should be, you should be able to walk through. And this portal should be on the threshold of two realities, okay. let's say heaven and hell, yeah. or whatever. Yeah? Yeah. And, um, so I never could find the right medium to actually build it. Yeah. You know, it needs yeah. to be a medium which is present and absent at the same time. Yeah. Because it's on the threshold of two realities, yeah. so you should be able to see it from two realities, yeah. and, but not, uh, and also not at all, you know? yeah. it needs to be interchanging. And then uh, they came out with these virtual reality glasses, uh, like finally you could just buy them mm -hmm. and there's a paint program in these virtual reality glasses where you can paint in 3D. Yeah. You see your hand and you make a line in the air and you can walk around, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it made like, yes, okay, of course, I have to paint or build or work on this portal in the virtual reality, which would then be the symbolically the other side of the mm -hmm. portal, the other reality. And you could only see the portal in the end when I finished painting it mm. in the desert with an app on your phone when then it's augmented reality yeah. and I placed it with a GPS uh, signal okay. I placed the portal there so if you have the app and you are in this part of the desert mm. there's a town called California City which is the famous uh, urban development project from the late 50s mm. lots of empty streets in the middle of the desert and there is this portal yeah. and, um, and you see it, you know, from the little hill. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that brought me to virtual reality mm -hmm. and to painting with a new media. And this um, new media did something amazing to the way I paint now. So I, I found my way back to painting, mm -hmm. which you see here and here, through which are inspired by everything I paint mm -hmm. in the virtual reality now. Okay. So this was the the way I had to take to yeah. come back to the old medium of painting. Yeah. And so now I love to um, I love to materialize the immaterial digital mm. things I paint mm. into an old medium like yeah. paint, you know, yeah. like thousand years old, you know. Yeah. And um, so it's inspired by this, mm. but it also becomes something else through the paint that I use, you know. Mm. So 
you would, would you call yourself a millennial uh, artist because you're living in between those spaces? Because you, you're also a digital, uh, because yeah. you're looking to the future and you're bringing that digital back to the, to the old canvases and to the old colors. So would you describe yourself mm -hmm. as, an, as, an, as an artist that's in between the old and the new? Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of an old-fashioned cyborg. Okay. <laughs> old-fashioned cyborg, wow. <laughs> it's a nice description of him. <laughs> that would have come with that. So it's nice, nice yeah. to describe. But you could that. say, I guess, experimental media art yeah. or multimedia art. Yeah, yeah. okay. So nice. Yeah. So um, let's let's go to the very first point where it all started. I mean, you are German, right? You have born here, I guess? Yeah, yes, I did. And um, what was your first connection or what was your first experience with art that you said, okay, that's what I want to do for myself, that's what I want to, that's where I see myself? I have to say, I mean, I never thought about it. I never yeah. had a different idea of what to do. Okay. So I guess I had some talent, mm -hmm. drawing yeah. or something. And then so did, did you have any, 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 was it in school that you started drawing all the time? Was oh yeah, sure, uh, and comics and, yeah. stuff, and then I did graffiti. Yeah. Then, uh, then I went to like I knew I had, I want to study art, mm. and like I never thought about anything else. And then I looked around where to study in Germany, mm. and I visited all the academies. Mm. But it made no sense to me because uh, somehow I wanted uh, to learn something, and there's just people putting paint on canvas, but nobody, you know, there's you know the artists, yeah. and there's no. Nobody tells you how to do this because yeah. of course it's art, you know. You yeah. can't, you can't teach Nobody it. Nobody can. Yeah. Tell you that. So I went. Uh, I met a, a young uh, lady on the train from the Czech Republic or something mm -hmm. while, while I was traveling through all these academies, and she told me that her sister is tied to this art school in Saint Petersburg in Russia, and it's the best art school in the world. Mm -hmm. And she was rejected. So I thought, okay, great. This is where I have to study, yeah? mm -hmm. and so. I bought a train ticket and went to St. Petersburg and started studying at the academy there, mm. called the Laken Academy. Mm. Okay. Which, yeah, <laughs> it's not the, yeah, the but most it's famous not, I, don't, I don't actually know everything, so <laughs> that's, that's my, it's no, my nobody knows. <laughs> and, uh, and there it's like they teach you to paint like 200 years ago. It's basically okay. socialist realism. Mm. And, but it was great. I mean, it's, it was 2000, and I was in Russia, you know, I was 20 years old, and you still felt the, the turmoil of the 90s, mm. and, you know, because of the yeah. system, the yeah. 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 USSR yeah. yeah. broke down, and so that was a great time, and I don't know if I learned anything there, yeah. but it, somehow it was great, but then um, I did my whole portfolio there, yeah. and I applied for Berlin, for the art school, yeah. and then they took me in Berlin, and so uh, then yeah. I studied four years in Berlin. And, you know, at the Uni class? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So how, how was it for you to finally move? I mean, you were searching in Germany and then you moved to, to Russia. I mean, where, where did you stay? And I mean, was you in the BBR, uh, BRD or the oh, yeah, BR? Oh, yeah, I'm from the West. Yeah. You're from the West. Yeah. West Berlin, yeah. So was it hard for you to move to the, to the East the European part? Because it was, it was not a different system. Was it hard for you to get in touch with other people, get in touch with the artwork, get, get in touch with the teachers? Mm, no, not at all. I mean, I knew some Russian before, okay. and then I, I learned it because I was the only foreigner on the academy, mm -hmm. and, I, and nobody spoke English. Yeah. So, so you had to go to the Russian and, group also. And no, it felt very natural. Yeah. Like, I nice. like the Russians. So nice. There was something connecting immediately yeah. with lots of vodka. And <laughs> that's a vodka, yeah. Yeah. That's a, so a lot of partying too, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was great. It was yeah. the, the time when all this electronic music and techno stuff kind of came to Russia yeah. after in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 Cool clubs. Yeah. So you said you you had you had an, an uh, artistic crisis before you moved to uh, to uh, the, the USA, California? Yes, right. right. And um, before that, you didn't. You didn't do anything with the digital, the, the yeah, digital sure. work. You just, you just was on paint canvas. 
uh, yeah, I was using very old media, like yeah. etching, yeah. print mediums yeah. from the 16th yeah. century. Yeah. 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 So, what? So, so, why would you say did you fall into that state of being not really creative or not having this the energy to paint anymore? Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's like you know you, you go into the studio yeah. and you can do everything. Yeah. But what do you do? So you have to find out what you have to do, yeah. which everybody, I guess, has to do with his life. But yeah. it's like if you're painting, nobody tells you what to do. So, so sometimes you just know what you have to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I have to. This is the topic I want mm -hmm. to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's great. It's I know it's like I have to get it out there or something. Mm -hmm. And and then maybe like you are in the possession of truth or something. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, like I mean my truth but yeah. I think oh this is the truth I have it you know and but then, this, at least your reality yeah right that's my reality, yeah, it's your reality. and then but it. then reality uh, change you know mm -hmm. like for instance you're in love with somebody mm -hmm. and it feels great and everything is right and you're on the right track and you know what to do and, mm -hmm. and this is the right person but then this goes away right yeah. and sometimes yeah sometimes, sometimes. so yeah. it's it's painful and so this old reality is you don't believe yeah. in it anymore yeah. And then you have to find like a new reality comes mm -hmm. that you you know and so so this is what happens. You, yeah. know, you lose the thing you love, yeah. Yeah. or you don't lose it. It's just like you don't believe in it anymore. You know? yeah. And then what do you do? You know. Yeah. So this was my artistic crisis. Yeah. I didn't know what to do, and then I went to the desert yeah. and tried to rebirth or downscale it out or update it or something yeah. and. And didn't manage to do it, you know. Okay. Quite good. And then, what saved me was a new medium. It gave yeah. me uh, uh, a new content for my yeah. art. The yeah. energy to, mm -hmm. to, to recreate that. Okay. So it's a, it was more an emotional state that you were in. So I'm like, I'm like searching for yourself, no, or searching for. Yeah, it is. That's what I'm trying to. It's more existential because okay. also. I look by doing art, yeah. and or like I define myself as an yeah. artist. So yeah. if I don't know what to paint, I don't exist anymore. Right? Yeah. yeah. So like who, you know? Yeah. So I need a new concept. You know? Yeah. Right. And then, but actually, it was a friend who told me, "Yeah, you have to go to Los Angeles." You know, mm -hmm. because I was here and like didn't know what to do. And so, <laughs> Dennis, you have to go to Los Angeles. You yeah. Know? And so, so I had to come up with an idea of what to do in Los Angeles, right. and I applied for a grant. So. Yeah. And so I had to come up with, with this idea what to do there, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I thought about okay, I'm gonna do an update mm -hmm. for Scale to Hell with it at the end of the Western world, which mm -hmm. is California and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was my idea. Yeah. And then I didn't get the grant, but I went anyway. Yeah. And I lived in the desert for a long time. Yeah. So how how is this living in the desert? I can I can imagine, I can imagine it's a tough work. No, it's very nice. I mean, California is not tough, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's everybody is very nice to yeah. you. Yeah. People drive safely. Yeah. Okay. So, no, it's easy, yeah. <laughs> it's very easy and it's beautiful the desert thing. Yeah. So back to the to, to your artworks, mm -hmm. do you how do you um, get it out to, to other people? I mean, um, do you have somebody that, that you are working with that you, a gallerist that is uh, showing your works or you a dealer who selling it to, to your customers. I mean, you say you live by your work. Mm -hmm. So how do you make a living out of it? Yeah, you, I fun. have a gallerist, a uh, yeah. gallery in mm -hmm. Amsterdam. Okay. They are very focused on art that deals with technology, like mm -hmm. post-internet art. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's my gallerist. Mm -hmm. And she, like, I do exhibitions, they yeah. go to art fairs, yeah. they show the, the paintings. Yeah. So how do you get in touch with them? And how does it come come along? How does it come across? Oh, I know him since a long time. And, okay. Um, we met on an art fair mm -hmm. where I exhibited yeah. some work in yeah. another gallery, yeah. and he saw it and he thought it was cool, and then yeah. we started working together. So. Yeah. I find your work so quite amazing. I can truly totally understand why he fell in love with it immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately. So um, the last thing that I would like to ask before we jump into the next episode. Um, where do you find your where do you find your inspiration first of all to do the augmented reality mm -hmm. 
and um, how do you transfer it to the canvas again? What is the, the process that you are going in? What is the, the path that you, how do you start? And uh, yeah. Well, my main inspiration is the Baroque, the time mm -hmm. of the Baroque, okay. because of like several things, but also I see a big connection to the, the, the illusion they created with the ceiling paintings, mm -hmm. where you you can, from a certain perspective, it feels like it's opening up the yeah. building into another world, yeah. Yeah. and there's actually the sky up there yeah. and stuff. Um, so I saw a connection with the virtual reality, with the illusion you have in there, yeah. and then also the, so that's my main inspiration, the Baroque, mm -hmm. where these, these ceiling paintings inspire me to build whole new compositions mm -hmm. in the VR, the way I paint. Yeah. So, like, for instance, since a year, I can show you later. Yeah. I could, since a year, I've, I've been working on this huge composition mm. for a monument in California City, okay. which is based upon a ceiling painting from the Baroque. Okay. And I, and the series, uh, it's called Artificial God. Mm. These uh, figures are painted in there. And so I take. Uh, I take photos in the VR of mm -hmm. the things I paint, but only, how do you say, uh, not the whole figure, but only some part of the details, yeah. you know? Because they're so huge, mm -hmm. these artificial gods. And then I start to paint them or transform them back onto the canvas, mm -hmm. the details I take from the virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and then you yeah. have something like, like this, you know, which is the detail of one of the figures I painted. Mm -hmm. And what I experienced was that people come into the studio and they um, they think this is an abstract painting, but it's actually a figure. It's like this one you see from mm -hmm. yeah. like the the lips, lips, uh, and the chin. Yeah. And, you know, some are more abstract than others, yeah. and some more visible. But so I thought that was interesting too yeah. that you think this is an abstract painting and. Yeah, and then it allowed me, like, I, I thought how to, I wanted to transform this fake digital brush into a real paintbrush. Uh, so yeah. I started using, like, big brushes and a lot of oil color. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's funny that this digital painting allowed me to take up a really classical painting position now. Yeah. You know, with, yeah. like, yeah. what do you expect from painting? Yeah. Like, lots of paint and expressive. Yeah. But this is all very calculated. Okay. In fact, I, I think about a lot of time how I do this brush yeah. stroke and I mix the color until I make it. You know, it's yeah. that I yeah. So you have a structure that you, that you work with? Yeah, it's very structured when yeah. I take it. Nice. But in the virtual reality, it's very expressive how I paint. You know? Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's um, make a cut here and move on to the second edition of this uh, conversation. We are going to dig deeper into his works. Um, I find it quite fascinating. I'm, I don't know how, what, what questions I should ask even, because it's like it's a new world to, to also to me. So um, stay tuned, and we're gonna talk more about his work, and you're also gonna see the augmented reality. So stay with us. Thank you. See you on the other side. Yes. <laughs> Second edition of this episode, and uh, I'm really excited right now because uh, it's something that I've been working on some, somehow, anyway, too. And uh, of course, he's doing his work with augmented reality. And um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sh start by showing you what I mean and why I'm so excited about this because he's using, of course, the digital works and he's using uh, his iPad. Uh, when you put it in front of him for work, you can see this. You can turn it. Sorry.
Yeah. 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 Which is somewhere here. <laughs> That's um <laughs> I can hold it. Uh, so maybe this for some people it seems abstract if you yeah, yeah. understand, but if when with the app yeah. you have the second layer yeah. and then you realize what it really is. Yeah. Okay. So I'm 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 kind of mind blowing mind blowing right now. So um, I don't even know where to start because I have so many questions. Oh. Um, but first of all, how do you get that uh, uh, that augmented reality thing going on? And what are the images? And what is the sound mm -hmm. that you hear that can hear uh, uh, nearby or mm -hmm. around it? So. What, what are they about? So I, I work with a game engine yeah. uh, called Unity. It's yeah. very common to build video games with it. Yeah. And I import my paintings from the virtual reality yeah. into this game engine. Yeah. And there I can play around with it yeah. and adjust it so it fits the painting. Yeah. Because this is from the back, the figure. Yeah. So I adjust the figure that's augmented. Yeah. I adjust it so it fits in the size, okay. and so it becomes huge, you know, and yeah. it fits the painting. And uh, then I build the app with, um, X, like I, I link the app with the painting, okay. so it only works if it sees the painting. Okay. So if you buy a painting, you mm -hmm. get the app, yeah. but the app yeah. only works with the painting. With the painting. So you have yeah. to have the painting in order to, to, to use, to, use to, to see the digital. Okay. And um, so this, uh, this is uh, from the series Artificial Gods, yeah. and so these are all the same figures, okay. which I paint from different perspectives, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And this figure is called Europa, okay. Europe, and so it's just one of the figures from my gigantic uh, fresco I'm painting in the virtual from this monument that yeah. started with this portal thing in California yeah. City, it's, uh, you'll see the yeah. virtual reality. And um, so I took the whole, uh, like I did some search on, on the internet, mm. just random picture search, yeah. a random topic, yeah. you know, also political topics yeah. that I linked to Europe. And I created this, I wanted to create this white noise, you know, so like a, a media wall, mm. which is kind of blowing out or stays uh, in contrast to mm. the thing I created with my own hand. Mm. And then, um, so this is a fragment, the painting is a fragment of the monument that I'm building in the, in the desert. Mm. And the monument includes the, the, the media pictures which mm. create our reality. Mm. You know, we perceive our world through pictures. Mm. Our culture is a picture-based culture. Yeah. And so, yeah, I wanted to put this into contrast, this reality that's, that we create or by posting pictures and yeah. creating this media over film yeah. and the, the painting I do with my own hand. Okay. Wow. And the noise uh, the, is just the, uh, the sound of all these videos or pictures you see. Yeah, yeah, so on okay. news channels yeah. and music. Yeah. And, uh, so it's not something that you actually wanted to have it, but it was something that happened while you I were searching. I wanted session. to have it, but, okay. but I, I put all the sounds mm, on at the same time. Yeah. And yeah, it even makes it was, a beat. Yeah. It somehow, but I don't know how this happened, but yeah. it was this noise. You know? so. Yeah, you, you can hear that, hear that in, in, in the, the, in the, uh, in the app. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it quite amazing that you also... I mean, your paintings are also quite loud, right? I mean, it's not it's not something common. It's like you see so many things in it, and you have to watch it carefully mm -hmm. in order to see the bigger picture, mm -hmm. right? To mm -hmm. see that it's it's a human being, as you were saying that somebody saw it, uh, said that it's an abstract uh, painting, mm -hmm. but actually it's not. 
And also somehow uh, I'm reminded of the um, Human Museum, in the, the human sculptures uh, where you, you can see where you can see all the all the muscles. Yeah, like Buddha from Hard. Yeah, Buddha yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it somehow mm -hmm. reminds me of, of that. Course, yeah. Yeah. Because, because the front paint, it's you know it's like painting a uh, anatomy. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm pressing layers. You yeah. Know, when I, when yeah. I paint in the VR. Yeah. So I, I start making. Um, like a sculpture would start, you know, mm -hmm. a, a guy who makes sculptures. Yeah. And um, so I make the outer lines and the frame, yeah. you know, and then I fill it in. Yeah. And so I work in layers, so I come to the part where it becomes muscle. Yeah. I, you know, I, I try to imitate the muscle. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I don't paint the skin or something else, so, yeah. because I like it. It's like raw. Oh, yeah. So it's like very these because more. these creations come into life. You know? Yeah. So it's they're not finished yet. Yeah. Like, Especially with the F, it means yeah. mind blowing. It's amazing. Um, but okay, the ne next question is like, how do you actually move from the virtual to the to the canvas? And you said that you you get your inspiration from the barrel, barrel, and then uh, you try to um, imagine something for the for for the augmented reality and from that augmented reality you go back into the canvas so can you picture us a process uh, how, how, how it works for you mm. so in the virtual reality mm -hmm. in the paint program yeah. where I paint the, the, the gods kind of you know, yeah. as I call it um, I can take Pictures, you know, okay. like photos, and, so, I, yeah. and I go really okay. close, you and too, I, I look what's what's a cool angle, you know, mm. to see these sculptures from. Because they're so big, I can never paint the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. So okay. I can only take excerpts yeah. of it. Yeah. And you take some details. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So I go around and I find interesting spots, spots, you know, mm. angles which inspire me to to do a composition for yeah. a painting. Yeah. And uh, I take the photo, and this photo is my reference yeah. then for the painting. Okay. So I create my own reference in the VR, mm -hmm. which I use for the painting. Okay, nice. And when you come to the painting, what is that process? I mean, I, you, you start. You probably start with the back, right? Because you said you, you have different layers in it, and you try to you know, do it one by one. So. You start with the background. Yeah, that's a really you... classical way. Okay. It's like I have a, a layer of yeah. red underneath. Yeah. It's like I roughly sketch it out. Yeah. That's how you build up paintings yeah. in a thousand years. And then yeah. I go thicker and thicker. Yeah. And this is also the way because I'm kind of the, so this paint program in which I work in the virtual mm -hmm. reality mm -hmm. is called Google Tilt Brush. Okay. So it's also, I'm incorporated by Google mm -hmm. when I'm in the virtual reality painting, mm -hmm. which kind of sucks because yeah. I'm stuck with their kitsch aesthetic. Yeah. It's kitsch, you know, yeah. it's like you get these special effects, brushes, mm -hmm. disco, and all this. I love it, but it's kitsch. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it's not my own aesthetic. Yeah. So by um, painting them in, uh, in oil, mm -hmm. they become, the aesthetic becomes part of my aesthetic again, mm. which also is on the brink of kitsch because of the colors mm. I use in the, in the VR. Kind of gives you, I love to, to use these um, bright colors, you know, it's digital, mm. it's this digital aesthetic. Okay. But by painting them, I, I managed to uh, become uh, autonomous again as, a, as an artist yeah. from the from the corporate aesthetics. Yeah. You know? yeah. Nice. I'm I'm mind blown by by your works, so um I don't I don't even I don't even want to know what to say right now because I also love that you we decided to use the, those brush strokes on on the uh, computer. They they often look quite like lame. They, they don't really look like a very very paintbrush, but you I, I think you you um, translated it very very good on this canvas mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't seem like on, on my, on my first glimpse it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't appear to me that it is that computer brushwork that you were taking to yeah. this you know yeah what's funny is that 
the, the digital brush brush stroke is mm. fake. Yeah. Like it only looks fake. Yeah. It's very thin, you know. Yeah. That's, they make it the shader yeah. that appears to be wet paint. You know? yeah. And so, but then these brush strokes are also fake yeah. because, like, I fake a, a brush stroke. Yeah. You know? And so it's funny that the results yeah. are fake. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But what about the color? In, in this in this picture, in this picture particularly, um, are you just um, it, is it the colors that you also have in the augmented reality that you, that yeah, you use, or, or do you change it sometimes? No, more or less. And these the these colors are like they're typical baroque colors. Okay. You know, yeah. with, uh, light like light blue and yeah. uh, pink. Yeah. What do you say? What is this in English? I don't know. Oh, oh, yeah. Color, you know, the yeah. pink. I would say pink. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some yellow, you know, yeah. these are the yeah. pastel, yeah. pastel colors of the Baroque. Beautiful. Wow. So, um, and then with, the, with this media overkill, mm. it's kind of um, because we live in a, in a time which, like the Baroque was, it, it produced so many paintings, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah? Yeah. It was uh, also an image overkill mm. in a way, mm. by uh, image production, mm. which I thought, I think it's, also similar to our time where we we only think in pictures, mm. you know, like Instagram and yeah. stuff. So we it's um, commercial advertising, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw also a parallel between the Baroque times and our yeah. times in this um, this uh, like regarding this. And mm. so I like to put the media over the wall. Wow. So. Um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> got, got my respect. Okay, it's thanks. Like, it's like overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming. I mean, it's a concept that is. I know it takes a lot of time and a lot of thought. Ten to, years to really get it done and to really make it. You say that ten, ten years. Yeah, you right? have to go to the desert. Yeah. To come out. Yeah. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Nice. So um, we are not going to end here. You're going to see um, the way he's also working on his computer and um, working on this uh, virtual reality thing. So uh, stay tuned. There's another thing coming. But I'm going to say goodbye for now. You're not going to see us again. I'm just no, you're going to dive into the virtual reality. Yeah, I'm going to dive into the virtual reality. That's, that's what I'm going to do right now. So see you hopefully at the next uh, edition of this conversations uh, series. And um, yeah, stay tuned and have a nice day. See you. Bye bye. Feels like I'm. Wow. And this kind of pressure.